Hi guys! In this video, you will learn what are the key steps to transform raw data into the nice data format that your machine learning models need. Let's get to it! Data preparation. Let's see what are the steps that take us from raw data to the nice formatted data that we need to do machine learning. On the top left, we're going to start with raw data that we are going to fetch from an external website. I'm going to show where in the next lesson. But these are essentially historical taxi rides, saying a certain taxi ride happened in that part of New York at that time. And we're going to collect all these events from that website. This is the raw data. The first thing we're going to do with that raw data is to validate it. This is something that you need to do in every data pipeline. That is, you need to make sure that the events that you're using are correct. What we will see with the example, what does uh, correct or incorrect look like, but validation is a critical part. Why? Because whatever you do from bad data is going to be bad. Training a machine learning model on bad data is not going to work. So cleaning the data is crucial. This is what we're going to do on this step. Once we have created this clean version of the data set, we're going to start transforming it. In this case, we're going to do aggregations to transform a list of raw events into time series data. We're going to bucket events per hour and per area in New York City. So this way, we're going to get a collection of time series data. And then finally, to do machine learning models, we need to use another format. That is, we need to have columns for the features and columns for the target. Right? So we're going to transform through a slicing operation, this time series data into the right format to do supervised machine learning models. So let's get started. In this video, we are going to transform the time series data that we created in the previous video into tabular data that we can use to train machine learning models. Tabular data sets have n plus one columns, where the first n columns are the features, that is the values that we can use as inputs for our model. And then the last column is the target, that is the number we want our model to predict. So how we transform time series into tabular data? For every historical value, for example, this one on the 1st of June at 12 a.m., we can call it the target. This is what we want to predict. And to predict that, we have access to historical data. That is, we set the number of features, that is a parameter. In this case, we set it to 12. And we basically extract the vector of values, which correspond to the 12 previous observations. And to do that, to extract, we just need to find out what are the indices, the row indices in which we need to cut. In this case, 0 to 12 for the features, and then 12 to 13 for the target. So using this cut of indices, we can just extract one vector for the features and one value for the target. And then we continue. So we slide one step, and then we go to the next target. We do the same operation. We take the 12 previous values with the corresponding cut of indices, and we extract a vector for the features and a value for the target. And we continue this operation, sliding one step every time. And that's it. This is what we do. We slice and we slide. Now we're going to move to the implementation. To keep the code clean, I'm going to define first a function get cutoff indices, which is going to pre-compute this list of cutoff indices. And using those values, we're going to start slicing and slide it. So let's move now onto the implementation. Let's create a notebook to implement this. So I'm going to call this notebook transform time series data into uh, features and targets. So first, we're going to load the file with time series data that we generated in our previous video. To start simple, we are going to first implement this transformation for just one location. And in this case, I'm going to use Central Park. There is pickup location ID 43. So we're going to define this data frame TS data one location, which corresponds to Central Park. And here I'm going to create the get cutoff indices function that I just mentioned. That is a function, it's going to take as inputs the original data set, the time series data set that we want to slice, the number of features that in our slice we set to 12, but this is, as I said, an input parameter, and the step size. The step size in, in the slides, I use it as one, meaning that every time I just slide it the window, by, the window by one, but this is a parameter you can set to a higher value. 
Why? Possibly to speed up development. If you set step size of 12, you're going to generate a smaller training set, but it's going to generate it faster. So this is a value that we can set to one or a larger value. So this is the function. I'm going to execute this cell to define it. And now to see how does the output look like, I'm going to generate a sample. So I'm going to set number of features 24, that is use the previous day, the whole previous day to generate features. And then I'm going to generate a step size of one as in the slides. And then I'm going to call the function. And then, for example, we can print the first five indices. So it makes sense. We take 0 to 24, and then 24 to 25, and then we slide by 1. So it's now 1 to 25, 25 to 26. So this function does exactly what we explained in the slides. It generates a list of tuples, which correspond to the cutoff indices. Now we are going to implement the slicing using these indices. For that, we're going to use uh, NumPy arrays. So we're going to define one NumPy array for the features whose shape is number of examples, which is the number of rows it will have. And number of columns is going to be, well, the number of features. Number of examples, as you see, is just the length of this list that we generated here. And Y is going to contain the targets, which in this case is a one-dimensional vector with as many rows as examples. And to generate the values, the features, and the targets, what we're doing is we are looping over the list of indices that we generated. And for every index, we are extracting the first and the second values are the cutoff points where you extract the features, which is what we do here. And then the mid one and the right side one are the cutoff indices to extract the target. And this is what we do here. We also keep track of the pickup hour that we use in this list because we are going to need it pretty soon. So we can run this. Super. And then to have a sense of what we just did, we can do a little, we can do some print statements to understand. The features have 719 rows, which is the number of samples, and it has 24 columns. That makes sense. And here's the array of values. So for example, the first observation has 97, 60, 22, up to number 6. So if you scroll up, you can see that these are precisely the values that you see here. So this function is doing what uh, is expected to do. Now something that is not very convenient is the fact that x is a NumPy array. We would like it to be a data frame, and that's something very easy to do to transform a NumPy array into a data frame. This is what we're doing here. So we're taking the NumPy array X and we are passing in into the PD data frame constructor and we are defining the names of the columns here. So if we do this, we're just gonna get a nice data frame where we have the feature. So as we said, 97, 60, 22. Then if I go to the right, here is the last feature, number six. Super, so this is the data frame with the features. Now we're gonna do something similar with the target. So the targets, which were the Y vector, I'm going to transform it again into a data frame and that's it. So this is the target for the first sample, for the second one, for the third one, and so on. Now to wrap this up, what I'm going to do is create a function that does this kind of processing for all locations. So we can just call this function and this function transforms the entire time series data into a tabular data set for all locations. This is the function that I'm gonna paste right here. So I'm gonna call it transform TS data into features and target. It's gonna take as inputs time series data. It's gonna take the number of features. Here I called it input sequence length, but it's essentially the number of features and then the step size, which can be one or larger than one. And here we just put together the code that I just showed. The only difference is that we're having a for loop here. For every location ID, we keep data for only that location right here. We extract the indices and then 
we apply the slicing operation right here that we just saw. Then we transform the NumPy array of features into a data frame, which we call features one location. We do the same for the targets. And then we concatenate results that we got from previous iterations. So we do that for the features here and for the targets. And then finally, we just remove indexes. There's just something to, to make them prettier. And then we return. So we return a tuple, which is features and the targets. So I'm going to just run the cell to have this function. And then I'm going to test that it works as expected. So I'm just going to call it. I'm going to call it with uh, number of features, as I said, input sequence length to one week. So it's 24 observations times seven times one. So it's basically one week of history. And then to speed things up, I'm going to set a step size of 24. So we can run this code. And as you see, it works reasonably fast. Again, for loops are very slow in Python. You can always parallelize them. Um, but this is something that I leave to you as an exercise. So that's it. Now we have a function that transforms time series data into features and target. In the next video, we're going to put everything together. So we're going to define the entire pipeline that takes raw data and outputs features and targets. If you want to get more hands-on content about machine learning, subscribe for free to this YouTube channel.